Uh, hello, good, good afternoon. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets. End of day's trading, the Monday, the 9th of May, 2016. Okay, folks, apologies for the uh, the uh, absence in making videos uh, on a daily basis. Usually, I do two videos a day. Uh, I've been in Cyprus uh, visiting um, on holiday. Uh, I'm back now. I uh, went on Wednesday, came back yesterday, so uh, back to normal service. Now, I was away last week, and it was a negative week for me last week. I uh, did not read the market, mainly, uh, obviously, because of one, I was absent. And two, the market was um, initially, I read it okay, and then um, it certainly uh, fell quite substantially. Uh, fell much more than I expected and uh, something that I miscalculated. So I'm um, trying to uh, re redress that wrong this week. So let's see uh, exactly what the narrative is in this marketplace. As always, please do visit TradeSignaler.com. Signal signals and market updates from leading providers. www.tradesignaler.com and download it from the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay. Uh, in terms of market close and market data for today, uh, we, as we know, the, <clears throat> the Asian markets... Uh, you had the uh, Shanghai down quite substantially, down 2.7%, mainly on the back of weaker Chinese imports, export export data. And that obviously uh, uh, incited a uh, risk off tone, uh, given the fact, even though the Nikkei was higher and the Hang Seng was higher, but it was China really was the main culprit, uh, which dictated the risk off tone. Now, prior to the uh, Ch Chinese or uh, market trading, uh, we had a bullish tone in the market because of the Canadian oil fields or Canadian sand fields basically being set on fire okay uh, and obviously that affecting the supply of oil and therefore obviously if oil prices go higher then that sends the uh, uh, the actual uh, <clears throat> uh, the oil supply uh, certainly comes into question that sends the price of oil higher okay so as Canadian wildfires overshadow Saudi change so here we go oil prices with volatile Mondays investors weigh the impact wildfires on Canadian output against the threatening US dollar and government shake up in Saudi Arabia the world's largest export okay so this main chap who has been uh, oosted uh, now these game fault US currency strengthened and the Saudi Arabia would keep producing at near record low under its newly appointed oil minister. Changing Saudi Arabia oil leadership when you underscore the shift in strategy to one focus on market share or price and less oil dependent future. Blah 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 blah. Okay, so the previous chap obviously was uh, was taken out uh, out of the equation, and that obviously led to the belief that uh, there would be a compromise with regards to oil output, and there may well be a shift in tone uh, given the fact that uh, the previous oil output freezes failed to uh, really materialize. Okay. So, given the fact that you had the situation with regards to wildfires on Canadian output, uh, adding the fact that you have this individual that was stubborn and staunch in his stance on a potential oil output freeze, uh, there was hope that that obviously would change, and that sent the oil prices high up to $46. That, in turn, should have technically sent the uh, stock market higher, which it did to a large extent because it did gap higher, but then the market reversed subsequently quite substantially, okay, since then. In terms of economic data, we had the US jobs data, obviously, on Friday, that was the main um, uh, focus on investors' eyes or uh, minds, shall we say, given the fact that we had a weak uh, number in on Friday with regards to jobs, and that obviously kept the pressure on the uh, market to a large extent and kept the uh, the, uh, the actual uh, indices at bay. Now, given the fact that oil prices obviously moved higher, that should technically have helped uh, the price or helped uh, equities in general. And then we had the uh, German data out this morning, which uh, which negated the. Um, the actual weak uh, Asian data overnight, although we did have uh, job advertisements in Australia, certainly weaker than expected. Imports, exports out of China, obviously weaker than expected over the weekend. And then we had the uh, French fa or German factory orders coming st much stronger than expected. And that certainly helped European markets move higher. We've had the Euro Eccentix investor confidence coming in line, although beating last month's so or last previous number. And then we had uh, Mr. Evans' speech was relatively hawkish, from my understanding. And uh, we had labor conditions that came in slightly weaker, and that's literally it, okay? That's literally it. So the focus today has been a strengthening of the US dollar, which has been very strange, given the fact that of the Aussie itself uh, selling off quite substantially given the uh, weak job day data overnight. But the uh, Kiwi owl stopped out twice on my longs today, which again, very strange, okay? So very, very strange to understand and fathom with regards to the Kiwi and, and the Euro as well, the Euro to a large extent, okay? now. Let's see where the market is positioned now, technically speaking. So let's bring up the market for you. Let's start off with the Euro stocks as always. Uh, okay, so the daily chart, the Euro stocks has a bottoming tail. 
So from my understanding or my perspective, you're looking for a move higher now. Uh, certainly have put in a potential bottom here, okay, for the euro stock, especially with the euro at 1.14 now. That should certainly help the European equities. 60 minute chart of the euro stocks, you can see that we are looking to potentially put in a higher low here. That pivot low certainly has been nailed from my perspective. Uh, any higher low uh, scenario here, we're looking at a potential move higher. Okay, so we are coming into, we certainly closed the gap in the morning, given the fact that, uh, like I explained, you had horizontal resistance. Uh, you had the situation in China overnight, etc., etc. Market gap tire quite substantial at 2,950. We sold off into gap fill at 2,937. And obviously, we had this monster rally on the back of obviously stronger oil prices. Uh, via Saudi, via Canada, okay, and obviously joint stronger German factory orders as well. And German factory orders will certainly underpin this market and keep this market at bay, from my understanding. 2950 will be a solid support level, and therefore I am looking for a potential move higher from here, okay. Right, uh, that's the Euro stocks uh, summation. German DAX, let's bring up the German DAX, okay. So, daily chart of the German DAX, let's bring that up for you. Ever since we closed the gap, certainly bounced, and that's what I was expecting thus far. I'm, I'm, I am expecting a move potentially for higher, uh, given the fact that we had stronger factory orders. So, looking for a further move up potentially to 200 MA, uh, looking at 200 MA, and potentially to 10400 again. There's certainly nothing stopping that. 60 minute chart, we certainly stole that at 200 MA, so watch out for that 200 MA. Although, having said that, we do need to close the gap. Stronger Germany factory orders, again, is a good catalyst. The Euro USD at 1.14 is a good catalyst to close that potential gap. Also, given the fact that US markets, obviously, from my perspective, are certainly looking uh, uh, as if they're based, especially the NASDAQ, and therefore looking to propel higher. So, watch out for that gap to close initially at 10121. Okay, the 10-minute uh, chart of the uh, uh, German DAX now. Uh, the unfilled gap certainly remains open, and that will remain open. Why? Because you had strong economic data. It's very unlikely for that to close on the back of strong economic data. So certainly bear that in mind, okay? And looking for a pullback. So any pullback, from my perspective, is healthy on the German DAX. Okay, so if you come into here, this is on here, previous support, previous resistance equals support. Anywhere around 9920, 9950, 9960, again, also is, is equivalent to support, from my understanding. And this is really just one big bull flag. So con consolidation on this bull bullish engulfing gandal, looking for a bull flag, and then obviously a thrust higher to 10120. So certainly bias at this uh, bias, bias is bullish at this perspective on the German DAX. Okay, looking at the French CAC uh, on the French CAC perspective, yes, you've certainly put in a bottoming tail. Whether you want to call that a potential double or double bottom in, uh, on a uh, daily chart, looking to potentially bounce from here now, looking up to close that gap at 4550. Okay, 60 minute chart, the French CAC again looking like it's playing out a uh, inverted head and shoulders formation here. Okay, so uh, certainly looks healthy from my perspective. As you can see, you put the left shoulder in. Okay, left shoulder's here, looking for the head. Looking for this right shoulder, bull flag, bang, off we go. Okay, so looking at a potential target of 4430, 4450, okay, on the upside. So certainly bullish from that perspective. Okay, 10 minute chart on the French cat. Yes, we did put an intraday high at uh, 4360, but that's certainly dissipated, given the fact that oil price is certainly starting to fall. Okay, so that's certainly dissipated. Right, okay, so 60 minute chart again, just a higher low, no lower lows, lower highs, looking for a higher low and then looking to potentially reverse. FTSE 100, let's have a look at the FTSE 100 now. Uh, inverted head and shoulders formation. I'm actually long, by the way, on the FTSE. And you can clearly see why. Inverted head and shoulders formation, right shoulder looking to thrust tire. Okay, daily chart on the FTSE itself. Bottoming tail certainly is in. Obviously, we've held that support at 6060, now looking to bit of bounce. We did test that 200 MA today, and I'm looking for that test again, given the fact that oil prices certainly remain bid. Okay, right. Uh, the 10 minute chart, the FTSE 100, really inverted head and shoulders, target 6215. We did get to 6180. Looking to potentially close that gap at uh, 6190, first of all, and then look to uh, obviously launch a rally up to 6210, 6220, etc., etc., and 6260 gap fill support as well. Okay, so bias remains bullish from this perspective, looking for a potential move higher. I'll just quickly cover the uh, oil price as well, given the fact that it's important. Okay, even though we've had bullish news thus far. It certainly is struggling to move higher, but we are now into support, so therefore expect a potential rally. And given the fact that fundamentals certainly confirming, I'm looking for a rally and a move higher on the oil price of oil. 60 minute chart, oil is now into support. That should certainly help global indices and look for a potential move higher. I'm currently long the Aussie and the FTSE and looking for a move higher on the, uh, the actual price of oil and the Aussie and the Kiwi, which obviously should help in terms of commodities. Okay, I think that's a market wrap, folks. Okay, be sure to. Uh, Visit tradesignal.com and download the latest app. Goodbye.